Hi, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with best-selling author. Um, so that's the higher law then. That's the future. That's what we're not doing. We're not doing the research. We're, you know, if I'm the sales guy, I don't yeah, know. You have to. You have to be able to have the, You have to be able to have the expertise. If you go in there and, and you simply, if, if you go, the, the the mistake some people make is rec is not understanding the ferocious impact of the information parity. That's not, out there. not understanding their own business well enough. Is what exactly. You're saying. Exactly. So We've got to become better experts at our own that business. Is, that is an incredibly important thing. You have to have the personal skill of being able to be attuned to people. And then also, you know, we talk, the, the, the B in the ABCs is buoyancy, which is anybody in sales, anybody in anything. I mean, you run a business, I run a business, you have a lot of entrepreneurs watching this. Uh, basically, all of us spend a lot of time getting rejected. Right. We hear no a lot. And it turns out, if you look at the science, that how you respond to that those notes, how you deal with rejection is yeah. a very good predictor for your success. So I know I, for one, would really love to know that answer because uh, probably a lot of people watching this feel like me. It's like I have an obviously great idea and I want you to accept it right. and agree that it's as good as I know that it is. Right. And yet, um, almost the default answer is, nah, I'm not interested. Yeah. I don't want it. Yeah. Um, so, so how do we deal with that? What's the best way to react? You know, Martin Seligman at the University of Pennsylvania gives us some really tangible, tactical things that we can do to deal with those kinds of settings. I hope you don't tell me to be super cheery and put on a smiley face because that just seems so fake. You're exactly right. But yeah. there is some evidence that actually that cheeriness can be effective in other kinds of circumstances, which we can get to in a moment. Okay. Here's the thing. Seligman, one of the, one of the giants of social psychology in the last 50 years, he wanted to understand how people deal with rejection. So who did he study, of course? Life insurance salesmen. Okay. So he goes <laughs> to this group of life insurance salesmen in Pennsylvania. So let me try to put Seligman's ideas into action. Here. Role play it. Yeah, we'll role play it, okay? So I'll be the, the seller and you just, you just reject me. Okay. Won't be hard. Okay. Um, so, uh, so let's say I'm trying to sell, you know, let's say I, I say to you, you know, I've got this, um, uh, this great uh, vacation home and you and your family can have it for, two weeks a year at a great price. Brian, are you with me? Yeah, no, not really feeling it. Okay, no all thanks. right, so let's say we've already done that and it's pretty clear that a no is a no. How I explain that is really important, okay? One dimension, personal, is it personal? I can say, oh God, I screwed up again. It's entirely my fault that this guy didn't buy. I messed it up somehow, okay? You explain it that it's personal, you're less likely to flourish. If you expl but because there's, there's an alternative explanation. You're this less guy, likely, okay. If, if you explain it as personal, ah, oh, it's all my fault. Yeah. You're, you're less likely to remain buoyant and actually be, be effective. Okay. Because there's, there there's plenty of other alternative explanations. Maybe this guy didn't want to buy. Maybe this guy is broke. Maybe this guy is going to get a divorce. Yeah. All kinds of reasons. So, so it isn't, you know, it isn't, most things are not entirely personal. Right. So if you say, hey, there are other explanations besides my incompetence, all right? Question, second question. Uh, is it pervasive? So you say, so I could say to this, oh God, this always happens. I can <laughs> never get anybody to buy this. Bad stuff. luck streak. I can never, it, it, oh, that's actually a little bit better. That's, that's a better, a bad, a bad luck streak is a little bit better, but saying, oh, this always happens to me. Yeah. I just can't get any, instead you should say, is it pervasive? No, maybe I'm just having a bad luck streak. Yeah. Or um, no, this isn't pervasive because last week I sold three of these things. Yeah. Okay? Third one, permanent. Oh my God, I didn't make this sale. It's, it's over, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm All done. All is lost. I'm finished, all is lost. Usually that's not the case. Yeah. And so the more you can explain things as, they take a wider view of it, and it's not false cheeriness, it's actually, it's actually looking at things through a wider lens. Mm -hmm. No, it's not entirely personal. No, it doesn't, it's not all entirely pervasive. No, it's not gonna ruin everything. Yeah. And what's what social psychologists call decatastrophizing things. And when you explain failure, in those kinds of terms, uh, you actually are ready for the next one. Yeah. It's a resiliency, isn't it? It's, it's similar to resiliency, yeah. Having started a business in 2007, right. I understand this, <laughs> this concept. Having, having, having uh, chosen as my, as my profession, um, uh, writing words on printed paper mm -hmm. in an era where that's becoming archaic, I deal with resiliency and buoyancy all the time. Yeah. Most people out there do not want to buy my book. 
Um, but there's some other people out there, if I can reach them, they're going to love this book. And so yeah. if, I get, if, I, if, I, if I crumple every time it says, ah, I'm not that interested. Yeah. Uh, What's some of the uh, rejection you've gotten, just either from publishers <laughs> or people who want to buy? Give us, give us a little insight into your life. Oh, I'm trying to think of what kind of rejection. I mean, I mean, it's so it's so. Oh, I can't say it's pervasive but, uh, because that would that would uh, not be decatastrophizing. Yeah. Um, you know, when I went out with my when I went out with my first book, um, there were several agents who weren't interested. There were several publishers who weren't interested. Yeah. And you hear that story over and yeah. over again. Yeah about the guy and then who ends up selling the yeah, gazillion yeah, yeah. no and I didn't I didn't even have one of those I didn't even have one of those things where I sent out you know you know where I sent out 50 you know went, went to 50 publishers and everyone rejected me I, I didn't have that but I did have people say no that's not very interesting no thanks yeah um, <laughs> but that happens all the time yeah I mean that happens all the time I mean that I, you know I go to a or my or you know with my publicist I'll go to a radio station talk to a radio producer and say hey we've got this awesome book out it's about how we're all in sales gives you all this great science all these great tips no thanks <laughs> uh, so, yeah. you know, the nature of my work is so much I in being essentially in the idea business is rejection after rejection after rejection yeah. after rejection.